Tech companies are obsessed with trying to get their own nuclear power plants. This graph shows that the number of computations required to train an AI model is doubling every six months. That point right there is GPT-4. Training it required more computations than almost any other AI model ever. And just to make sure you understand how crazy this is, this graph is in logarithmic scale, which means that each successive notch on the y-axis is adding a zero to the amount below it. This makes it easier to compare each of these data points despite the fact that they range across 13 orders of magnitude. And since more computations use more electricity, the amount of energy it takes to train these AI models is undergoing insane exponential growth. And this is why tech companies are suddenly obsessed with trying to get their own nuclear power plants. Speaking of which, I'm gonna be giving away this nuclear power plant humidifier to one of you at the end of this video, so stay tuned and figure out how to win it. I made this video because I was curious to learn about what are the limitations on advancing artificial intelligence. And in this video, we're gonna learn about how the number one constraint on the advancement of artificial intelligence is electricity. But first, let's go on a field trip. I decided to become a YouTuber because I wanted to be like Casey Neistat. Film myself as a grown man getting out of bed. Alexa, what time is it? It's 9.06 a.m. And get motivated for a marathon of narcissistic documentation. Use the exact same music that Casey uses. And remind you endlessly where this adventure starts. My tone here is pretty cynical, but in all seriousness, I pay out the ass to live in New York City. And so to get my money's worth, I gotta show it off. That's what the mug is about. That's what the drone footage is about. This place can make anybody seem more interesting than they really are. Okay, let's go. But the problem is, unlike Casey Neistat, I'm not cool. Nobody invites me to any events or lets me fly first class. So instead, I'm going to Pennsylvania? God damn it! Pursue your happiness? What the f Oh, it's my mom. Hello? Hi there. Guess where I am? New Jersey. That's a pretty good guess. It's a New Jersey adjacent state. Washington, D.C. That does that does Maryland. No, doesn't touch New Jersey either. Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania. Ah, uh, are you what are you doing in Pennsylvania? There's a curveball. I think you're going to Philadelphia. Three Mile Island. Oh, we talked about that. Three Mile Island. The power plant famous for the 1970s nuclear accident, which just to be clear, was not a disaster. It's just an accident. They just shut down one of the nuclear reactors and the other one kept operating until 2019. Nobody died. President Carter even visited the power plant three days after the accident. He never would have gone there if it was a nuclear disaster. It was just an accident. The power plant sits on an island in the middle of the Susquehanna River that's three miles long which is where they got the clever name. Most other power plants don't have their own island. They're just shitholes. This is what I drove four hours for. Three Mile Island. It is a fixer-upper nuclear power plant that Microsoft just signed a 20-year contract with because that is the fastest way for them to get the electricity they need to power their AI data centers. While all their competitors like Amazon are looking into getting small modular reactors and starting their own nuclear power plants because that's how much electricity training AI models is gonna need in the future. It was very clever of Microsoft to partner with Constellation Energy to get this fixer-upper nuclear plant. Creating a new nuclear power plant probably takes at least a decade, requires a lot of regulation and permitting, and instead Microsoft might be getting almost a gigawatt's worth of power from this thing by 2028. There are not a lot of fixer-upper nuclear plants out there. That's the probably the only one that you can just, it's like, oh, they shut it down, but we could fire it up again for you. You guys have, yeah, you guys are really rich. Well, yeah, we'll fire it up for you. Can you sign a 20 year contract? They can. It's crazy. It's fucking insane. It is fucking insane. To, to train these AI models, 
the amount of computation that's required to keep training the more and more advanced models and is doubling every six months and has been since 2010. And so they're literally hitting a limit soon yeah. where because to, of the energy. To, exactly, to continue training these yeah. AI models and to continue having this every six month doubling, it's not yeah. gonna be much further before these companies require their own power plants to train a single model. And so that's exactly right. what's happening. Microsoft literally is buying out a fixer-upper nuclear plant, which is just so crazy. <laughs> yep. And crazy. there aren't there well, there aren't many of them. So like Amazon and some of the other ones are like going into like small modular reactors, which don't really exist yet. What's the modular reactor? That's, so they're not part of the they're part of the reason that, that nuclear is you no know, part of the reason that nuclear is expensive is because the reactors are all they're tailor made to the plant. They're custom made, oh, which makes it very expensive. So if you like kind of made mm -hmm. these reactors modular, they're more sort of off the shelf reactors that you can just sort of use in more circumstances. The the, the use cases are more flexible. And then you could mass produce yeah. them rather than just making one at a time. Uh, you could bring the cost of nuclear down, I think, a lot that way. We are rapidly approaching a point at which the supply of electricity is going to constrain and delay the advancement of artificial intelligence. In researching this video, I found this clip of Mark Zuckerberg on Dwarkesh Patel's podcast talking about this exact thing. You're going to run into energy constraints. I think we would probably build out bigger clusters than we currently can if we could get the energy to do it. You know, right now, I think a, a lot of data centers are on the order of 50 megawatts or 100 megawatts, or like a big one might be 150 megawatts. Okay, so you take a whole data center and you fill it up with just all the stuff that you need to do for training and you build the biggest cluster you can. I think a bunch of companies are running at stuff like that. Then when you start getting into building a data center that's like 300 megawatts or 500 megawatts or a gigawatt, I just, I mean, just no one has built a single gigawatt data center yet. So I think it will happen, right? I mean, this is only a matter of time, but it's it's not going to be like next year. I mean, just to, I guess, put this in perspective, I think a gigawatt, it's like around the size of like a meaningful nuclear power plant only going towards training a model. And then you run into these things that just end up being slower in the world. Like getting energy permitted is like a very heavily regulated government function. And if you're talking about building large new power plants or large build outs and then building transmission lines that cross other private or public land that is just a heavily regulated thing so you're talking about many years of lead time that's that's a very long term project it's it's one of the trickiest things in the world to plan around is when you have an exponential curve how long does it keep going for i don't think anyone in the industry can really tell you that it will continue scaling at that rate for sure right in general you know, in history, you hit bottlenecks at certain points. As kind of an interesting backstory, in the 1950s and 60s, as the semiconductor industry was nascent, for a long time it was the case that as transistors got smaller and smaller, the amount of electricity required to run them also diminished. And what that meant is that as computing got more powerful, it also became more power efficient. You might have heard of Moore's Law, which says that every two years, the amount of transistors you can fit into a single chip doubles. This phenomenon where as chips get smaller, they also become more power efficient is known as Dennard scaling. And at some point in the mid 2000s, Dennard scaling kind of broke down. And the reason is because the distances within the transistor were getting so tiny that even when the transistors were switched off, electricity could still leak through them. And although NVIDIA has gained a lot of notoriety for being the premier manufacturer of AI chips, the reality is all these tech companies are now designing their own chips with the goal of being more and more power efficient. And so while Dennard scaling has broken down, there are still clever ways in which they're figuring out how to make chips more power efficient, but the rates at which we are making chips more power efficient is not anywhere near keeping up with the doubling of computational power required every six months to train more advanced AI models. That is why all these tech companies are trying to get their own nuclear power plants. My name's Will, I'm a video producer. I get paid to point cameras, like this one, at famous people. But in my spare time, I wanna make videos about technology, cause as you can see, I am immersed in technology. I live and breathe this shit. And I wanna help you 
learn more about it. By the way, if you want to win my nuclear power plant humidifier over here, it would be nice if you subscribed, but also you can sign up for my email list, which I won't spam you. I'll just notify you when I make another video. That's the point of the email list. I make a new video. I tell you about it. And I also give away sick prizes like this. There's a link in the video description for my email list. Click it, sign up, and I'm going to choose one of you at random to give this thing to. Also, I just want to say in our modern era of media, you have a lot of options about what content you could watch. You could watch Survivor on Paramount Plus, or you could listen to the Caller Daddy podcast, but instead you're here watching my videos, and I just want to say that really means a lot. Thank you so much for finding your way here to the Will Chilton YouTube channel.